you guys ever seen the Dos Equis commercial, The Most Interesting Man in the, wor in the World? Yes. No. Okay, we're going to call it The Most Interesting Man in the World. That's dedicated to my dad. <laughs> okay. Get out of the way of the TV. <laughs> He was born in Chillicothe, Missouri, and one of the first things he learned in school was how to, to learn to spell Chillicothe. <laughs> As a boy, he had a paper route and once made a special late night delivery to tell the town folk that Lindbergh's baby was kidnapped. You see, Charles Lindbergh was famous, uh, was a famous pilot who, uh, oh, never mind. As a boy, <laughs> he had a paper route and once made a special Oh, did you just do that? <laughs> he had a paper route. Don't take it, Adrian. When he was 10, he was temporarily deserted by his family for about five minutes. He was in the bathroom of a gas station when he heard the family car drive away, running and screaming and pulling up his pants. The car finally stopped. This story has been repeated and repeated from generation to generation. <laughs> He's the most interesting man in the world. <laughs> when he was a boy, his family moved from Missouri to Virginia to Maryland. And one summer, at the age of 16, he hitchhiked to New York to see the World's Fair, which is pretty cool. <laughs> Meet me in St. Louis! <laughs> He became a lieutenant in the Navy and helped command the boat that protected the state of Florida. Well, someone had to. <laughs> Not only handsome, but being a lieutenant made him even more attractive to the ladies, especially his future wife when they met at a dance at an officer's club in Georgetown. He was from a small town in Missouri, and his wife is, was from a small town in Missouri as well. But they met in Washington, D.C. He was 27 and she was 23. He was the son of James Forrestal, the Secretary of the Navy. Uh, at least that's what he told her. <laughs> He proposed to his wife on the third date, and they're still married after six, well, going on 63 years. Not 63 yet. <laughs> he and his wife moved from Maryland to California, where they raised their six children and ended up in Orange County, also known as Behind the Orange Curtain. As a place, his children escaped from behind the orange curtain, but he likes it there. <laughs> he made an agreement with his wife. She could raise the children Catholic as long as he could stay at home or at home on Sunday mornings during doing his own ritual, watching football in his underwear. <laughs> He's the most interesting man in the world. He once drove his family of eight in a crowded station wagon from the west coast to the east coast and back again without having a nervous breakdown. But a couple of his kids almost did. <laughs> Stuckies in 500 miles, 300 miles, 50, 20. There went Stuckies. <laughs> I was on the wrong side of the road. And taking, and taking uh, travel uh, home movies, he would always say, do a little dance children did, not exactly knowing why. <laughs> when his kids asked, are we home yet? He came up with the, the line or the phrase, if we were, if we lived here, we'd be home now. <laughs> For fun in the 60s, he and his wife would go square dancing. This was way before cable TV. People were desperate then. <laughs> Watching Lawrence Love on television made him happy, but that didn't make his children happy. <laughs> In 67, he heard the news of a great fire approaching his home, springing into action. He threw sprinklers on his roof. He knew water didn't burn. 
After the fire, his house was the only one standing in the neighborhood. He's quite the hero. Really. Is that here? Is that here? Is that here? In his professional life, he's contracted the buildings of bridges and other such structures. And his two houses. Yes, this is the house that Bob built. <laughs> In 78, he went to Iran with wife and son as a consulting engineer assisting the Shah in building a deep water port in the Persian Gulf. But the revolution and the Ayatollah got in the way. With rioting in the streets, he sent his wife and son to Italy while he, he decided to go back and clean up the business and lived under curfew and barely escaped with family belongings. The most interesting man in the world. Retired now, he and his wife have traveled to over 60 countries, and his wife has fallen down in at least five of them. <laughs> <laughs> He's traveled to the Great Wall of China, the Taj Mahal, Machu Picchu, the pyramids. He's cruised down the Nile. Name the place. He's been there. Not only does he buy books from Amazon, He's been to the Amazon. <laughs> if he sees another folk dancer, he's going to throw up. The most interesting man in the world. In travel photos, he points out monuments and statues, as if you didn't notice. While his wife will spend hours in a museum, he can breeze through most of them in 10 minutes. He can do the entire loop in under 30 minutes. Why is the Mona Lisa smiling? He really doesn't care. <laughs> He's traveled the world, and what does he come home with? Paper masks and bird quilts? <laughs> He's the most interesting man in the world. He's the father of six children and grandfather of seven. His grandkids feel at ease with him. Why? Because he's just like a kid himself. Just ask his wife. <laughs> his grandson and granddaughter lived in dormitories in D.C. across the street from the church where he and his wife married 60 years before. He married well and only once to the second cousin once removed to the new Irish Prime Minister. And he won't hesitate to tell you that. <laughs> He can change the topic of any conversation by uttering one word. The word? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he was a Truman Democrat and a Reagan Republican. And this November, he will be voting for Barack Obama. Please. <laughs> <laughs> He's become quite the movie critic. Thumbs up, thumbs down. No, he'll tell you if, it, if it's the stupidest movie he's ever seen. <laughs> and he's seen quite a few of those. <laughs> his grandchildren are just getting started in their professional lives. But his children vary in occupations from lawyer to writer, computer programmer to land surveyor, aerospace engineer to fashion designer, and his wife a teacher and he a builder. His family could run a whole friggin' town. <laughs> His daughter designed clothes that were sold in Nordstrom's. And he's still been wearing the same four shirts for the last four years. <laughs> His wife says he's politically incorrect when he asks people what their nationality is, especially when he tries to imitate their accents to their face. <laughs> <laughs> so tell you Popeye didn't do it, whatever that means. <laughs> watches repeats of the old two and a half men over and over and really thinks Charlie Shane is with the most interesting man. When watching television with him, try to pry the TV remote out of his hands. Yeah, just try. He's the most interesting man in the world. He's a wonderful man, and he's had a wonderful life. Happy, Happy birthday! birthday. Yeah. Woo! Oh, come on. Come on.
going to take it over. Push. Help her push her up. Push her up. Push her. Push. Pull her up. Push. <laughs> Before my mom talks, I want to just say uh, this is, you know, uh, I've got two great parents here, and this is a celebration of both of them, not just my dad. Don't kill yourself. Okay, can you hear me? I think it's working. All right, I wanted to introduce my family, and I'm going to start with my oldest. This is. Harry, and he's an attorney, and he lives in Topanga. <laughs> there you go, <laughs> Harry. <laughs> when I got married, my dad was a year younger than I am now. <laughs> no. Okay, and his wife, Wendy. Yeah. And he has to go for an attorney. He has an attorney and has her own office in uh, Calabasas. And she does divorces, right? I usually call it me. Yeah, it's so <laughs> okay, and their children, my grandson, Dylan, Pastor, and he's a, a graduate student at Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. And uh, his younger sister, where are you, Jen? She's right there. <laughs> And uh, she works in Washington, D.C., and she just got promoted. Yay, <laughs> hey, Topanga um, Forester! <laughs> okay, and the next one is, um, where is Celia? Okay, I'm there is Celia. Woo, we have got Celia. And she is my fashion designer daughter, and she lives in Snohomish, Washington. And her husband couldn't go, he's working, but they have four and a half acres, she has two horses, a goat, a dog, and two cats, and every now and then... And a bird! And a bird! Don't forget the bird! Don't forget the bird! I remember Butch. And every, she, she said she felt like a frontier lady because she saw a... Uh, what is that you saw in your yard? A, a lion. Coyote. Uh, mountain lion. Uh, uh, we saw um, a mountain lion. A mountain lion. Okay. A cougar. Cougar. No pet those. Sounds yeah. like no. <laughs> Sounds like careful of the cougars. <laughs> Coyote. Her child is oh, the Huskies. <laughs> yeah. 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 She has her own business in Seattle. It's called True North Land Survey. So if you need a survey in Seattle. She has a beautiful <laughs> site on the internet. So look her up. <laughs> she worked for, I think, what was it, four, 12 or 14 years in Orange County? What? <laughs> you. <laughs> I'm in Orange County. And where she worked on her own up in Kirkland in Seattle. And then she and her partner, uh, Tim, started this business about nine years Ten ago. Ten years ago, nine yeah. Nine years ago, and they're doing great. So Woohoo! Yeah. Woohoo! Yeah. And now we have Tim. Yeah. Mr. Personality. Tim is a computer. She didn't mention you were in the company. <laughs> <laughs> Girls. I think he doesn't really know what I do. <laughs> Behind the camera. Okay. <laughs> Yay! Oldest, and she's our oldest granddaughter, and she lives in Washington, D.C., and she works for a charitable organization mm -hmm. called Sasha Bruce. Bruce. Mm -hmm. And they get kids off the street and try to 
going to turn your lives around and get them back into school. Yay! You have no idea. Now, uh, <laughs> Renee has a friend with her. Where is Chris? <laughs> the friend. A friend. A friend. <laughs> Good old what's his name? <laughs> that guy. Hey, you want to come? I'm like, okay. <laughs> they met in South Korea where they both taught English for two years. Chris is Korean. <laughs> There's a whole lot of kids. There's a couple more kids. to his sister. Cal Poly 
Pomona and he became an aeronautical engineer and he was recruited by McDonnell Douglas and it was building those big uh, planes that carried the they fly. <laughs> <laughs> Big government planes. And uh, when that funding ran out, he was picked up by United Airlines for seven years. And Bob and I, out of all, we took three long trips every year. <laughs> <laughs> Right behind you. Maryland, um, a 
took him to some of the historic areas in Maryland, and that's the night he proposed to me. And uh, then the following weekend, he had me out for uh, Sunday dinner with his family. And I am the youngest of nine children, and he is one of eight children, and um, I fell in love with his family. Um, so that cinched the deal. <laughs> now, at the time, I happened to be working for the American Institute of Architects, and that was over, they had their offices in the Octagon House. Now, I don't know if you know anything about the Octagon House, but that was the White House after the British burned our White House. Dolly Madison and the President Madison moved down to the Octagon House. And look up Octagon House on Wikipedia. It has a really interesting history. It's also, it's also haunted. <laughs> right now it's a museum and the uh, architects have built a big office building in back. So when they found out that I was going to get married, the lawyer came in to see me and he said, what you want to do is get married at the end of the year because you get more money back from your taxes. <laughs> well, I don't even remember getting money back from taxes. I really didn't make enough money. But that is the worst time in the year to have an anniversary. December 31st. Oh, <laughs> first. <laughs> One time when we were in um, Tunis, Tunisia, we were with two other couples we knew, and we had Bobby with us, he was 14. And, <laughs> oh my goodness, this is our 30th wedding anniversary. <laughs> and they all said, well you, go, you and Bob go on out and have a good time, and we'll take care of Bobby and we'll all go to McDonald's or something. Well, I didn't find out for a whole long year that that was really our 29th. <laughs> <laughs> what? Our 29th. It's really hard when you're right at the end of the year. I think that's about all I have to say. Anybody else want to add something? Yay! Yay! Catcher, catcher. <laughs> um, I wanted to say a few words about my dad. A um, couple of things that he taught me. One thing is, he might remember that I had no idea that jaybirds were naked. <laughs> he uh, taught me how to tie my shoes. <clears throat> he was ahead of his time. He can take, right now they have, like, it's really popular to take two people's names and merge them together. Gradulina or whatever. And um, he was ahead of his time and he would take Eileen Maria and turn it into Eileen Nutteria. <laughs> I had no idea that was, he was talking about me. <laughs> um, it was really good. I really enjoyed our time together repairing things and um, handing him tools. Uh, but it was a little embarrassing when I started to go collect tools on my own, going into the hardware store and asking for thingamabobs and whatchamajiggers. <laughs> he uh, was also a pacifist. You might not know this about him. We had chickens. So about once a year, we would go and take the roosters, because he couldn't kill the roosters. So we had our little our yearly jaunt across on the other side of the canyon and drop off the roosters. <laughs> so that was our bonding moment. <laughs> um, another thing, uh, his, health, his, his uh, version of health care, I would get him a lot of scrapes and cuts and stuff when I was a little kid. So I would soak everything. Everything got soaked. And uh, to get all the germs and the dirt out. 
and the, the kicker was, if you could wiggle it, it wasn't broken. <laughs> <laughs> My dad. Yay! I'm Tim. Uh, my dad's favorite child. <laughs> <laughs> Self-proclaimed. <laughs> Ooh, digging deep. <laughs> um, funny story. When we were growing up in our household, I never heard my dad swear. And you know, most of us by, by junior high school, we're getting pretty good at it. <laughs> you know? But what we, my dad never swore in the household, and I guess he felt no need to do that. And believe me, I put him to the test. I mean, when I took my car and I ran it through the garage wall, I interrupted his hee-haw show. <laughs> and he looked at me and he says, you're going to fix it. <laughs> and I learned a lot about construction right here. <laughs> and I thought, this guy is a saint. And I played golf. And the first tee, he sliced it. And that little ball, it all came out. He just let it rip. So I realized my dad was a master. <laughs> dad, this is your birthday, and you can swear if you want. <laughs> Let me, uh, you know, let me just thank you for all coming today. I'm Harry, uh, Bob's oldest. And, uh, Louder! I'm Harry, Bob's oldest. I, first of all, I want to thank you all for coming today to celebrate this birthday. It almost didn't happen. And uh, in fact, uh, it, it wouldn't have been for Brenda, my sister, Brenda. It wouldn't have been put together at all. Yay, Mom! Well, <laughs> a lot of people participated in the event. Uh, uh, you know, this is a, one of the things I'm trying to think of something to say about my dad is uh, I'm 60 years of age and I can, I can never remember my dad losing it. And many of you probably know that. Uh, his major reaction, emotional reaction when he gets upset is and that's the big one. And uh, he's always quick with a joke. And uh, I'm even amazed today that, you know, uh, I'll say something and I feel like I'm set up, uh, you know, for a, a comedy routine. Uh, I, promised, uh, I promised my family I wouldn't say this joke, but I'm going to say it. <laughs> we were recently at my parents' house watching a, a TV show on Friday called uh, Who Do You Think You Are? And it's a, basically it's where you take these celebrities and you do a genealogical background, you know, where you go back on their father or mother's side and you find out where they came from. And we had just, Wendy, my wife Wendy and I just had seen the um, show in, involving the actress Helen Hunt and we came back downstairs and we told my dad, oh, we saw this great show involving the actress Helen Hunt uh, that he studied, you know, her genealogy. And my dad said, you heard the story about Helen Hunt? I said, no. Well, she, uh, well, Helen Hunt had checked into a hotel, and in her hotel room, she found this wallet full of money, but no identification. So she called up, picked up the phone, and called the hotel clerk and said, uh, excuse me, I just found this wallet full of lots of money in my room. Would you post a notice to people letting them know that if they lost it, they can come see me? So what did he post? If you lost your wallet full of money, go to Helen Hunt for it. <laughs> but in any event, um, you know, uh, the, the, the other thing, um, you know, I, I always think of themes and uh, I look at my, my aunt, uh, my aunt Lois, my uncle Dan, and uh, the family that my dad came from, and uh, uh, and this is probably true of a lot of you in that same generation. Uh, you went through a lot of hardship and you went through a lot of, you know, a lot of ups and downs and yet you're still here. And, uh, and you know, it's a compliment that, uh, uh, and I don't know what it is, but that generation it just seems unflappable. And uh, it's a compliment to them and it's a compliment to my dad specific, specifically because today's his birthday. 
And you know, I look at my, you know, I, I look at that sign down there that my uh, cousin Sandy prepared, saying "Happy 90th Birthday." I, I still can't believe he's 90 years old because he's not 90 to me. You know, it's like he's always been the same age. He's always been my dad. And uh, you know, what was a tough life in the beginning, you know, ended up with a great relationship with my mother. The fact that they've traveled around the world many times. They have a large family, and uh, in that to that extent, to quote uh, a line from It's a Wonderful Life with uh, Jimmy Stewart, Dad, you're the richest man in town. All right. Woo! I wanted to uh, introduce you to some more family. <laughs> <laughs> this is Bob's sister, Lois. Yay! Yay. Yay. <laughs> and they came here all the way from Port Walton Beach, Florida. Yeah. Right. Woo -woo. Yeah. And we like them so much. That is just wonderful. Now, his little brother, Dan, yeah. and his wife, Nancy. Yeah. Yeah. And they came all the way from the village in Florida. Florida. All right. <laughs> Everyone stand up and take a bow. Julie. Julia. Okay. This is uh, Katie Corbin Walter and her husband Jay. And their daughter Julia. Take a bow. Park there. <laughs> when they first moved there, they had three little boys that grew up alongside of our kids. Now they're all grown up and they have how many grandchildren? Twelve. Wow. Beat us. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is my, well, one of my older friends over here, Bud Treby. Yeah. Yeah. For about 30 years, we were in a bridge group together, me and his wife and Bob and I and two other couples, and uh, they've either moved away or passed away, and not many of us left, with Bud and Bob and me here. Julie. What? Julie. Oh my God. Julie. <laughs> <laughs> Lois and Al, 
this is so nice. She has two sons here. Yeah, yeah. There's Lee. Yeah. And Dana. And Dana. California Maritime Academy. He has one more year and then he's going to go to sea. Wow. Awesome. Probably should have just had everybody stand. Wait, let it go. Wait, let it go. They're uh, Wendy and Perry's neighbors, <laughs> but they come to a lot of events. Yeah. <laughs> Are you two met in Korea? Yeah. What do you guys do now? Julie. I'm a case worker with homeless kids. Julie. <laughs> I research commercial real estate. Are you in Washington, D.C. too? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. She's been once, I've never been. Okay. But here you have to. Hey! 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 Don't forget his daughter. She's the favorite child, right, Sue? You have to press the button or do I speak loud? You know what? I'm glad I was able to pull the cork out of the wine bottle for Julie's friends. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Deb, you know, it's going to be another 10 years before Willard Scott's going to even be on your radar, okay? <laughs> I got it. Yeah. <laughs> oh. No, but I I'm, I'm so glad to be here. You're seeing him? Keep going. Let me cut. I'm so glad to finally meet my cousin Dick, who I've been emailing for the last 12 years. <laughs> After I, I did a trip to Vietnam, and he says, "Well, I, I was stationed in v Vietnam, so we could, you know, we continue to um, correspond. So that's been a great correspondence. Thank you so much. And I was so surprised that you were here today. <laughs> so, um, without further ado, cake, cake. Let's do the cake. Okay. Woo! Woo!